Good evening and Buona Yesu Asifiwe. Welcome to day three of Harvest Conference 2020. Come on, somebody give a shout to Jesus. Remember, it's the Focus Edition, and I am delighted to be a host today. My name is Wangeshi Nerito. But before we could go further, maybe we can read a word from First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, NIV. Like newborn babies. Crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. So I'm delighted that you are here. Please host a watch party. Invite your people. Invite your colleagues. Invite your partners. Invite everyone in your life because we need to grow spiritually as the word of God has told us. So uh, I'm going to invite our praise and worship team so that they can whet our appetite for the word of God. But before that, you, there are numbers on our screen. Uh, you can uh, reach out to us in case you need any pastoral care, in case you need any pastoral support. We have people in waiting for you. So, uh, praise and worship team, Karibuni Sana. I am unstoppable, invincible, victorious. I can do all things. Let's do that again. I am unstoppable, uh -huh. invincible, victorious. I can do all things. Let's go to the lift. To the lift. With a Jesus smile. Come on. One more time. To the lift. Every challenge that I may face I'm filled with your glory I'm filled with your grace I am filled with your favor To overcome every challenge that I may face Oh 
here for the very first time you're gonna get to meet the people behind the beautiful gifts that we have here on the keys one and two we have Larry and Mze Josh Wenyewe living a glorious life come on Anayeshikilia groove pale ni mwenye we Mr. Muli the bassist. Come on! A glorious life. Ha ha! Ay, 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 Ni Buana Joe the singer, Quenya the electric guitar. Come on, a glorious life. Ha -ha. All right, from the comfort of your seats. We just want to declare the glorious life that we live. Hallelujah. Ay, 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 ay.
na sio hapa tu popote ambapo watu wako wanakusanyika manyumbani mwetu katika ofisi zetu katika magari tunaposafiri popote tunapojipata tunayoahidi ya kwamba wewe bwana mwema uko pamoja nasi hautuachi hata kamwe na tunakushukuru siku ya leo kwa sababu milele hautatuacha okay utukufu milele
msingi na tunatukuza jina lako milele. Praise the Lord everybody and I'm grateful and I thank the Lord for such an opportunity as this to come to Deliverance Church International Kasarani Zimmerman to share the word of the Lord together with us this uh, day. I thank the Lord uh, for such an opportunity as he has given to me, you know, just to be the one to share this word. It's a privilege and an honor that God has given us that we can hear the word of God. Like also to thank uh, my very good friend, Pastor Brian Mwashigadi, um, for allowing me to come here. And uh, I bless God for this man of God. He's been doing a great, great job throughout the Harvest Conferences that we have been participating in. I'm really grateful that Pastor Brian can bring this to be. And together with that wonderful team of his uh, that puts all these things together, this time around we're doing it online. And I know that... Um, we all shall be blessed even while we are at home or wherever you are. And I know God is going to do a wonderful thing as we continue to listen to the word of God. Well, this time around we have been given a theme to run with, the Focus Edition. The Harvest Conference 2020, the Focus Edition. How I love that kind of uh, theme that is running uh, this this year. And, and what, what I'm going to be speaking as to us this evening has a lot to do with our focus as Christians. Because I found out, I came to find out that for many of us, it, we are in danger of missing out on what our focus really is. I'd like to thank uh, even uh, Bishop uh, Jimmy Kimani and uh, uh, Mama Alice for this opportunity to, to come to each and everyone who is in Deliverance Church Zimmerman and from Deliverance, Deliverance Church Zimmerman all over the world. I bless God for you and I thank you for such great leadership especially through these times and these seasons. I'm a big fan of Deliverance Church International. My name is Pastor Jackson uh, Kiarian. I'm a pastor at Deliverance Church International, Kahawa West, and I bless the Lord for uh, our senior pastor and uh, everything that he has done, even in my life. I have to uh, say that he has been quite quite an influence over who I am today. Today we are going to be talking about something very simple. We're going to be talking about us and our believing in God. And I know it's a very, very simple topic, but I'd like for us to look at it in a, such a deeper way and what believing in God is, especially as concerns what our focus is uh, as Christians. Um, and just before we do that, can we have just a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, how excellent you are, how lifted you are in our midst, O oh God. How glorious it is when we can hear your word, O oh Lord. And despite all the challenges that we are having in our country and even in the world that we are living in, O oh God, we are grateful that your word is still living and active and sharper than a double-edged sword. We are grateful, Jehovah, that we can be able to share the word of God, continue growing deeper and deeper in you, O oh God, and continuing to become more and more and more like you. We are so grateful, Jesus, that you have given us a chance to become sanctified, to grow into becoming like Christ, O oh God and to, 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 to dine with you even while we are still on earth. Jehovah God, we thank you and we bless you. Father, teach us, O oh God, from your word as we look at this thing uh, about believing in God and what focus really is. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you shall teach us many things from your word. And Father, I ask that you shall help me to present this word as you have required from, for me to do. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'd like to invite you to read a portion of scripture from a very interesting book. I'm going to ask us to go to the book of Zechariah. So if you can, please just go to the book of Zechariah now. Zechariah, Haggai, and Malachi are three books of the minor prophets. Uh, many of us are aware of, of, of these minor prophets, but Zechariah, Haggai, and Malachi are three books of the minor prophets that are, um, well, took place. Uh, the, the, the setting which 
they are in, it's a setting where it took place at a time when the children of Israel moved from Babylon to um, the promised land, back to their promised land, back to Canaan. Many of us are aware of the shift from Egypt to the promised land, but not so many of us are, are fully aware of what would happen in the time when the children of Israel were moving or moved from um, the the, 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 the captivity or the exile they were sent to by God to the land of Babylon and now they were coming back after 70 years of discipline. And that's where we find the book of Nehemiah and Ezra as well, uh, Malachi, Zechariah, and Haggai. Now Zechariah is a prophet that comes up right after Haggai. Haggai uh, Haggai's ministry ends one month after Zechariah's begin. And um, what's the point of having prophets speak to them at a time as this. Why? The major thing that would be happening at this time is that God required of them to come back to the promised land that they would rebuild the temple of the Lord. Not so much so that they can rebuild their lives, but rebuild the temple of the Lord. The first thing that God requires of you to do when you are born again is to make your body a living sacrifice. In other words, you ought to rebuild a temple for him. And that's what he required of them. If you could look at the every, every other person, uh, every other father of faith of old, whenever God did something in their lives, the first thing they would do is build an altar to the Lord. And that's in the Old Testament. And we're going to look at what it means in the New Testament. Well, it's not a very common book, but you're going to read a very, actually one of the most common scriptures that is found in the book of Zechariah. By the way, it's in the book of Zechariah that we find the, form common, the, the very common phrase, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. That's in uh, chapter number four. But my concentration here to, today is on chapter number three. The Bible says in chapter number three, then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? Now Joshua, who was being accused by the way, now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes and uh, filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. The angel said uh, to those who were standing before him, take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sin, and I will put rich garments on you. Then I said, put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him, while the angel of the Lord stood by. My very, my very concentration is on verse number six. The angel of the Lord gave this charge to Joshua. Verse number seven, this is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk in my ways and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have charge over my courts. And I will give you a place among these standing here. And that's my concentration. The angel of the Lord gives this charge to Joshua, verse number six, then verse number seven. This is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk in my ways and keep my requirements, what will happen to you? This is Joshua the high priest. Joshua the high priest is told, if you walk in my ways and keep my commandments and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house. In other words, you will be the one to govern my temple. And number two, you will have charge over my courts. Number three, I will give you a place among these who are standing here. Now, this is not only so for this high priest called Joshua. This is so much so for us who are believers that God has taken us and has wiped our filth away. The Bible says that Joshua had, had on himself filthy clothes and God took the filthy clothes and he, he dressed him in a new garment and he put a, a, a clean turban on his head. And the Bible says that Joshua became a new person and then after God did something to him, he gave a requirement to this high priest called Joshua. Told him, keep my requirements. And then he told him, obey and keep my laws. I'm here today to speak on a very simple topic, believing in God. What does all this have to do with believing in God? Allow me to, uh, to, to, to give you three 
components or three things that comprise of belief in God. Allow me to tell you three things that comprise belief in God. Then you're going, I'm going to link this up with the, the, the text that we have here today. Now, if you, many of us know John 3.16, the Bible says, that's the most common scripture. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There we go, that word, believe in him. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. We're going to go back to that scripture, but I want to pick out that word, belief, and, 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 and just tell a few things about it. Number one, the first component of belief in God is called credence. Credence is, well, where we get the word credibility from, and many of us know about what, some, what, what being credible is or what something is when it has credence. Basically, what it means is that you are able to be convinced that a thing exists or is working. If you go and shop for something and that thing is credible, it means that that thing is original. That thing has, um, has some, 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 some form of, you know, you can believe in it. You can believe that it works. You can believe, you are convinced that this thing, if I use it, it will work exactly the way it's expected to work. The first thing that I, uh, the first component of belief is credence. And when you're talking about God, credence is having faith that God is. And we, many of us do not have a problem with the fact that God is. In fact, the Bible says that even the devil believes and he trembles. That's what the Bible says. Many of us don't have a problem with the existence of God, especially in the generation that I'm serving. We do not have a problem. In fact, 80% of this country is Christian. They actually do believe that God exists. But is that only the, the only thing that is required of you who is focused on God and who is going to heaven? And that's why we go to the next thing. The first thing, the first component of belief in God is called credence. And the second component of believing in God is called confidence. And this is where most of the problem comes in. Because credence is believing that God exists. And confidence is believing in God, which means trusting in him. Now, I've just introduced the word trust. I've just introduced a word that is so commonly used amongst many circles in our society, yet we may not get the refined meaning of this trust. You see, if a person is to be trustworthy, this person must be able, you must be able to give that person a thing to do so that that person can be counted as trustworthy. You see, if I am, if you would be, if you would have trust in me, that means that you, we, you are able to confidently give Jack the leeway to take care of your life, to take care of your business, to take care of even your, probably even your spouse or your, any, your girlfriend or your boy or whatever. You are, he's able to, Jack is able to take care of your things exactly the way that you are able to take care of your own things. Now, it is one thing for you to believe in Jack. But it is another thing for you to trust Jack. <laughs> now, that is what confidence is. And, and God, God, God tells us one thing that is very simple. Do you trust me? Of course, many of, of us will say yes. Usually what, we are, usually what we mean when we say yes to God is that you believe that he is. But trusting in God is a different thing. Having confidence in God means that you can be able to give God your life. And he can be able, and you are confident that is that you are confident in the fact that he can be able to take care of your life. Do you actually trust in God? Do you actually believe in God that is able to take care of all that is in your life? Is he trustworthy to you? That's the question I'm asking. He, has has he proven himself to be trustworthy? And when he proves himself to be trustworthy, you are able to say that. Yes, I believe in God. Now, see, for the believer, he, does, he doesn't just believe that God is. See, Hebrews 11, chapter number, Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6 says, For without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he is. In other words, he must believe that he exists. There's no problem with the first statement. He must believe that he exists. And number two, he must believe that he is a rewarder of 
them who diligently seek him. Now that's where the problem is, that God rewards those who diligently seek after him. That's where the problem with Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 6 is for many of us who profess faith in God. Because it's one thing to believe that God exists. It's another thing for you to trust in him. So the, the believer who, who is confident that God exists, and number two, who is conf confident that, that, that God is and trusting goes to, goes to the third thing. The third thing, the first thing is called, um, the first thing is called credence. The second one is called confidence. And the third one is called continuance. What is continuance? Continuance is walking in this confidence. And it is walking in confidence that God will do, God is, God is able to, and even if he will not do it, I am still walking with him. Continuance is walking faithfully with God, that, that you don't just walk today and tomorrow you lose faith in him, and the other day you, 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 you are almost doubtful about what God is and what he can do for you. Continuance is walking with God despite the pain. Continuance is walking with God despite the disappointment, because many times the, 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 the children of Israel, many times the fathers of faith were disappointed by what God did with them. You see, when the Bible says all things work together for good, it does not mean that all things work together according to your expectation. <laughs> it means that all things work together, all things good and bad, they work together for the good of you so that they can build you up, so that you can become more like Christ. And that's why the men of faith are, are saluted in Hebrews 11 as giants of faith. And, and Hebrews 11, the, the, the chapter of faith, talks about Great men of faith. Why? Because they walked with God. They had a continuance with God. That when, 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 they, they, would, when, when they would face great challenges, they never lost faith in God. You see, this continuance is the same thing that is in, is in marriage, is in Christian, a Christian-based marriage between a man and a wife. That whether or not, you see, what we say up there when, 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 when you are saying our vows, is that in good times and in bad times, whether in, in all the changes of life, in health and in times of sickness, in wealth and in times of poverty, that you will not break faith. You will not break faith with this woman. And it is the same kind of a relationship that God asks of us, that are you faithful with me? That you will not break faith with me. That you will keep trusting me, not just one day, but you will trust me by, from the time you enter this narrow gate, this small gate, you will trust me in this narrow way to the very end. Will you trust me? That's the question that is being asked today. Will you, will you be focused on me? Whether or not you, you, you prayed for a car and it has never showed up for the last 40 years. Whether or not you prayed for a job and for the last six years it never showed up. By the way, that happened to me anyway. That's a different story. Whether or not it is good, will you keep faith with me? Will you? You see now, that, that now changes the story of John 3.16. You see, because John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the, and the correct interpretation to this for our knowledge and for our understanding is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever continues to believe in him, it is a present continuous tense that is used when the Bible talks about whoever believes in him, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It is a continuous thing of believing in God till the very end. And child of God, I want to tell you today that this thing that we call salvation is not a, just a one-time thing that you profess faith, that you say, God Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my life, come into my life, be the Savior, be the Savior, and the Lord of my life, and the Lord of my life. It is not just a statement that you make. It is a walk that you walk every single day of your life. Believing and trusting in this God, not losing our hope, fixing our eyes on Jesus. 
That's what believing in God is. Actually, the interpretation is that whoever continues believing in him shall not perish, but will continue having everlasting life. Let me present a very, a, a very scary scripture to many of us. A very scary scripture. And I didn't want to do this, but let me just say it. It's found in the book of uh, Revelation chapter number three. I'm not able to find it, but the Bible says um, that in, in the book of Revelation, chapter number three, um, for them who will overcome, for them who will persevere to the very end, I can't remember where the scripture is, the, them who will persevere to the very end, I will not blot out their name from the book of life. You see, now that makes me think, that makes me wonder, that makes me that makes me scared because if my name can, the Bible says their name shall not be blotted out over the book of, from, from the book of life. That means your name is written down and there is a possibility of your name being blotted out, being removed from this book of life. And that's a scary thing of someone who has professed faith in God. That my name and your name can actually be blotted out of the book of life. And why should your name be blotted out if you do not endure to the very end, if you do not keep your focus, if you do not keep your eyes fixed? Then there is a possibility, child of God, that your name can be blotted out of the book of life. You see, ladies and gentlemen, what is written in the book of Hebrews chapter number 11? Hebrews 11 is, is a book of faith. And it says, now faith is the evidence of things not seen as yet. And when the Bible talks about now faith is, it talks about, first of all, the people who were giants of faith. It talks about Abel, it talks about Abraham and Noah, it talks about um, um, David and Samson, and funny enough, it talks about Rahab and Ruth. The Bible talks about people who went through great and crazy kinds of things crazy things, people who are thrown into lion's dens, people who are inside fires. It talks about people who had difficult decisions to make like Rahab. People who had difficult decisions to make like Ruth. And because they had a faith in God, they believed and trusted in God even beyond the confines of their culture. Rahab decided to follow God. And therefore now, Rahab becomes an ancestor of Christ. You see, people like Ruth who would forgo their culture and how difficult it is for many of us who are believers to forgo our culture for the sake of the cross. And he talks about these people of faith. And an interesting person that he talks about, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 11, some were sown asunder. Who was sown asunder? It is an, a prophet who is so very common to us. We don't know this story so well. But the death, how Isaiah met his death, the prophet Isaiah met his death by being sown asunder. You see what happened to, 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 uh, at, at that time is that the king was so angry with the prophecies of Isaiah. He was angry because Isaiah was prophesying something that he did not want to hear. And Isaiah was an infamous prophet. He was a prophet of doom. There were so many prophets at his time. And many of them were prophesying great things and wonderful things and happiness. Just like many of us here today, we are in a generation where many of us are being prophesied to prosperity and happiness and greatness. And few of us, few of us would want to hear a prophet who would rebuke us and tell us you are going the wrong way. But that was Isaiah. And the Bible says of him that the, 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 the king took a tree and he gorged out inside the trunk the contents that were inside the trunk of a tree. And he put Isaiah inside that tree trunk. And he commanded his people, his army, commanded his, his, his commander to, 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 to sow that tree into two. And Isaiah met his death. Will you keep faith with God? Will you keep focus in God to the very end, child of God? You see, yesterday I was talking to our young people about salvation. And I was telling them, I was reminding them uh, the words of a friend of mine who was talking to us and he was telling us, what is it 
what is there in this salvation that you are so attracted to? Because in this salvation, in other parts of the world, people are murdered. People are, people are beheaded. People are, are tortured simply because they were seen with a Bible or were seen with scripture in their hands or in, on their phones or something. See, in other parts of the world, you have to be an underground church. And I know many of us know this. You have to be an underground church for you to be continuing in fellowship as a believer. So what is it in this salvation that makes you so attracted to it? And that's what we were tackling with our young people back in Kahawa West. You see, child of God, it must be beyond material gain. It must be beyond um, a, a, a social status. It must be beyond being cool that you are a Christian and that you're a person of faith. Your focus is not what God can do for you in this life. The focus of a believer is what God has done for you so that you will have a choice to make that will help you in the time in the life to come. That's why we believe and trust in God. That's why our focus is on God. It's not on earthly things. In fact, Jesus said, put your eye not on the worldly things, but on heavenly things. You see, most of our preaching today talks about how God will bless you. Talks about how God will lift you. Talks, and on those, those things are good. It talk, talk, talks about how God will, 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 will give you a financial breakthrough. Talks about how, how God will, will lift you and all that. And those are good things. But I've got to tell you here today, but the same, same God took Job, a righteous man, through a very torturous time. In fact, we don't like to refer to this, but Job underwent a demonic attack of magnificent nature. It was, it was a crazy thing that Job went through, yet he was a righteous man. Bible says that, have you considered my servant Job? He fears the Lord more than any other person. He's a perfect man. That's what God was telling the enemy. You see, then he comes and tells the enemy, you do whatever you want to do with him, but don't touch his soul. See, child of God, the same God who can lift you, the same God who can do all that he can do and bless you indeed. And he, in fact, he does. He does do all those things. See, the same God, by, because he is interested in your growth and your knowing him. He can even subject you to some things in life that will mold you and fix you and fit you into a thing that God wants you to become like for his own glory. Why? Because he is interested in your eternity. You, you are just interested in the temporal things of this world. So God is interested in far much more. That's, that's, that defines now what your focus must be. Your focus must not be in the temporal things of this world. It must be in an eternal thing, an eternal, an eternal blessing that is found in Christ Jesus. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 13, the Bible says, enter through the narrow gate. The Bible says, for large is the gate and broad is the road that leads to, 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 to destruction and many enter through it. Then it continues to say, but small is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life and few find it. How I pray that you who's listening to this message will be part of the few. You see, it's one thing to enter a small gate and it's another thing to walk this narrow way. This small gate is called Jesus Christ. And now, child of God, you must walk this narrow way. And this narrow way requires that you focus on Christ. Many are the distractions in this narrow way. Many are the, are, are, are the things that will attract you away from this narrow way. In fact, this narrow way has other, other, other ways that seem right to a man, that seem right to a Christian, yet they deter you from the focus which is on Christ. How I pray by the grace of God and by the masses of God, all of us will be focused. All of us will be focused on this narrow way. The Bible says that for those who endure to the end shall be saved. Those who endure to the very end shall be saved. 
Now, just like Joshua, many of us have been cleaned. But not so many of us go to verse number 7 of Zechariah chapter number 3. If you obey my requirements, and if you obey what I tell you in my laws, I will make you stand among these who are here in the throne room of God. That's where our focus should be like, should be like children of God. And I pray that many of us shall find our focus. Let's be in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful that you have given us this opportunity to listen to your word. I pray that God, you shall keep us focused on you. And I pray that you shall help us indeed. Help those who just made a confession of faith and just sat down waiting to get to heaven. Help them to see and realize that if they are not walking on one road, then they are assuredly walking on another road. And teach us to walk in the narrow road. And help us indeed to walk in a way that is pleasing unto you. To the glory and praise and honor of your name. I thank you and I bless you, O God, for all that you have done for us through Christ Jesus. And I pray that, God, you shall be with us in all that we do. And in all that happens, oh God, teach us to put you first. Teach us to put you first. Teach us to keep focused on you. I thank you and I bless you and I lift you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you indeed. Amen. What a word. We thank God, Pastor, for you. We pray that you may be replenished, that you may be refilled, that you may receive fresh anointing for that word in the name of Jesus Christ. So it's about time that we give. Uh, we are going to run a short clip that is going to guide us on how we are going to do that. Buana Asifiwe. We invite you to give your tithes and offerings online via the m -Pesa pay bill 247247 under the account number 012012 or under the pay bill 864231 under the account number stating the purpose of your gift. You can also send a direct bank transfer to Equity Bank under the account 11802610647000 or you can send it to Cooperative Bank under the account 0112808167. Or to Standard Chartered Bank under the account 01028765324400. Right. Thank you for giving. Uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we love you. We thank you and we bless your holy name this evening. Thank you for giving to us and co for causing us to be obedient to you and giving, uh, giving back to you. We pray that you may bless us, the Lord, you may replenish our pockets, that you may bless us with so much more, and the Lord, you may bless us with the spirit of obedience, so that, Lord, my Father, you may continue to bless us. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. We pray, trusting and believing in thee. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Tonight, we are looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Guess who's preaching? Our very own Pastor Brian Mwashigadi. You don't want to miss that. So I'll see you tomorrow. But before that, turn to your partner. Turn to the person next to you. And, uh, and let's say, uh, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and your families now and forevermore. Until next time, God bless you.